Hello guys, welcome back again, and today we're going to talk about Street Fighter V, we're going to talk about the new character unveiled, and more importantly, how the DLC is going to be handled in Street Fighter V. Now, Capcom said they learned uh, how to handle the DLC after what happened with Street Fighter IV, which a lot of players, you know, basically, because there was, you know, Street Fighter IV, and the Super Street Fighter IV, and the Super Street Fighter IV Arcade Edition, and Super Ultra Street Fighter IV, that a lot of fans, they said, had basically felt left behind, if they hadn't played it for a while, they just, they could, just want to jump in and play and they can do it. So what they've done with this one is the game is going to start with basically 16 characters. That's the core characters of the game. And any characters added, a new characters individually will be added. And basically, you will just have to unlock them to be able to play them. Uh, meaning, now this is not necessarily a new approach. Other people have done this before. Well, there will be two different ways to basically uh, earn... Uh, money. There'll be the fighting one, which is basically money you earn by simply fighting in the game, and you can use that to, to unlock the characters when you get a certain amount, or Zenny, which can be bought with real-time money. If you're just the kind of person who doesn't want to play to unlock it, and you just want to have it now, there's that option. But you don't have to. Again, you can play with the fight money, and the fight money will allow you to uh, basically earn, earn that by playing the game and eventually get enough to unlock the characters. There's going to be four new characters to the franchise, which we'll get to one they've unveiled recently. Now, this all this information was unveiled at Evo. And, uh, again, if you don't know, Street Fighter V is coming to PS4 and PC next spring. PS4 betas start to kick off July 23rd, and will run to the 28th, uh, followed by, uh, of course, the PC beta this fall. Again, the third beta has an unspecified time. Nobody knows. And, of course, these will be basically used to tweak the in-game currency system. Obviously, that will be the most important part of this upcoming game is the currency, since that's what people are going to need to unlock characters. And they're going to keep uh, adding new characters, you know, over time because they want to keep the game new and fresh and to keep people continually playing, which became a problem with Street Fighter Four. Yes, you got your hardcore fans playing it, but for someone like me who's not the... I mean, I played Street Fighter Two and all of its iterations in the arcade, you know, and I play Street Fighter, but I'm not a hardcore Street Fighter fan, I mean, I own Street Fighter 4, I own Super Street Fighter 4, I play them occasionally, it's not my go-to game, I don't play it every day, and so that's the kind of people, they're trying to keep playing the game, they're just trying to keep the game always populated, and not let people get away from it, that's the point of this, now, of course, there have been things like this recently, like Splatoon, for example, where even now, Yes, the stuff is on the disc in Splatoon, but over time they're releasing it, and it keeps people interested because they're getting different stuff all the time. And that's the same way here. At least that's what they're going for. Uh, you know, Capcom basically said they think this will be more of a long-term engagement because the more you play, the more you are awarded. Additionally, it says the route avoids dividing the player's base by releasing an update you have to pay for. Those who don't spend a dime beyond the cost of the game itself can simply play with the characters they already have available to them. There you go. Again, we'll have to see how this works out once the game's out. How well this works out, you know, for the fans. How do you feel about the fact that you're going to either have to play the game or you can either just sit there and play the game like a lot of games grind it until you get, you know, like a lot of games these days, especially if you play mobile, uses this model. We have to grind of course, if you play the game every day, you're probably going to get the, the, the fight money to get it anyway. To get the new characters. But for those who don't want to wait again, can just simply buy it. So, enough about that. Let's get to the other part. And that was about the new character that was unveiled. Which, of course, his name was what Nikali. Um, he's uh, more of a wild-looking grappler character. Uh, basically, here's what Capcom said about him. Possessing a wide variety of salvage and close range attack, all of Nikali's moves have been forged through the heat of battle to ensure he's inflicting maximum pain upon his opponents. Making full use of the battle system mechanics, Nikali's V skill allows him to pound the ground with both fists, creating an explosion that damages the enemy, whereas the powerful V trigger allows him to channel a mysterious energy that changes his hair color, alters his personality for a short period of time. Now, Capcom is expected to have more information on Nikali's origin and storyline in the coming months and of course the other characters which we don't know about them yet but how do you feel about 
the new Street Fighter Five having the you know the the DLC where you basically have to unlock the characters through either playing the game or you could just pay to do it. Do you feel this is a lot like a right, right medium, or do you feel like this is just them like, in an attempt to make you spend the money by making you either you play it to get it or spend the money to get it? it I mean. It just depends on how implemented, how easy it is to get fight money. That's really, and how much these characters are going to cost for fight money. That only matters, because if you want your casual fans, let's say, to get the other characters, you're not going to put in an absorbent amount of money. Because if you do, you're going to turn off those casual players who might buy this game because they've heard about Street Fighter before and they never played it. Maybe this is your first, their first time going to be playing a Street Fighter game. It can happen. Those people may. Be turned off if it's a. They're gonna have to play a lot, and they're especially if they're not really good at, at fighters, and they haven't learned the game. I know some people say, "Oh, this will teach them to play the game, and they'll make them learn it by playing it more." That's not always the case. Some people just simply, if they don't learn it right away, they'll quit playing. I mean, this is the best option I guess they're available. When you do DLC, it's really hard to get the right balance, truthfully, between what you as a company want to do and what a the gamers expect, right? A lot of gamers say, if it's on the disc already, people will almost arguably say it should be released when the game's released. There's nothing wrong with that argument. That's a valid argument. But, if this DLC is not on the disc, the argument can be made, why don't you pay for it? Because they're doing additional work. Again, we'll have to see how this is implemented. We'll have to see whether, and I'm sure people are going to track this as soon as it comes out, how many people actually pay money to get the characters over People who don't, right? That's really the ultimate uh, success for them in this game. I mean, at least they're trying new ways to do this instead of uh, the same old, same old. So, what do you guys think of this? Are you excited for this? Are you excited for just the way they're doing the new DLC? Are you excited for the new character? Jeff Kimmon game. Love to hear your guys' opinions like always. This was a long one, but I'm going to cut the video soon, guys. Later.